What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be getting started with writing UI tests for our application. So what you're seeing on the simulator now is actually my UI tests running live. So you're gonna see a bunch of changes to the UI that I am currently not doing myself. This is all being managed by our UI tests. So this is insanely cool, right? We can test all of these different scenarios in terms of the functionality of our UI by changing inputs, hitting buttons, and making sure that everything works and shows up on screen as expected. So that was one UI test. Here's another one that it's going to perform automatically by itself. And we can see here that it's running smoothly and I'm going to pull up the completed application uh, in Xcode so you can guys, guys can actually see that this is running in real time. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video, guys, and UI tests are extremely powerful to make sure the flow of your application works as expected and everything that you need on screen from text inputs to navigation titles to tapping buttons and flowing between screens and a navigation flow works as expected. So this is huge for making sure that your app works as expected from a UI perspective. In coming together with unit tests, we're going to get full test coverage of our entire application here, which is what you should strive for in every production app that you build. So to get started, we are going to hop up to our project name and in this general tab, we are once again going to create an entirely new target to manage our UI tests. So we will have three targets at the end of this, one for our main app, one for our unit tests, and then another for our UI tests. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit plus down there at the bottom and I'm going to filter by saying test and we're gonna create this UI testing bundle. We're gonna hit next we, our language is Swift. Unfortunately, Swift testing is not currently available for UI tests, so we're gonna be using the XC test testing system, and everything else should be good to go, so let's go ahead and hit finish. Uh, ooh, I need to say savings calculator tutorial UI tests. So make sure you guys name that properly. And now we have our third target, and we see another folder showing up there inside of our uh, navigation panel on the left. So to get started here, guys, we're gonna go up to the top of our file and we're gonna say at testable import and we're gonna import our main app target in case we need anything from this that we wanna test like our model files, our default configurations, et cetera, et cetera. And what I want us to do is just go ahead and hit this play button to run this sort of boilerplate template that we have here just to make sure everything builds as expected, we launch our simulator as expected, and that these tests pass, right? They're, there's, they're not testing anything right now. We just wanna make sure that we're good to go before we start testing. I always do that as just a trial run, just to make sure everything is good before I get started. And guys, you should see your simulator doing a couple test launches. And right now I think it's testing this launch performance. So it's gonna test, like launch the app, I think five or 10 times or something to try to get some sort of launch metric performance or baseline. Um, I usually don't do this, especially in an app like this, simply because uh, we don't have any complex like processes happening on app launch. It's not like we have to fetch anything from a database or perform some complex operation to launch our app. But we'll let this thing spaz out and uh, until it's done. And it looks like all of our tests succeed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this guy. We don't need to test our launch performance, but in an application that does have a complex launch uh, process, like for example, Instagram, uh, there's an unimaginable amount of things they do on app launch. Uh, you might want to do that there for a more complex application. So let's go ahead and start by writing our first test, guys. We can first clean up some of this boilerplate code here. So we can delete all of these comments and this continue after failure Boolean flag simply says, hey, if your tests fail, do you wanna keep going or do you wanna just stop there? So this is uh, a property that I believe belongs to the XC test case superclass. And here we don't need this comment either. And now in this test example, we can get started. So. We first start by creating our application guys and then call app.launch. That's how the simulator actually starts launching our app. And then anything we write after this, the sort of testing robot, you could call it, will perform those actions and test our app. Uh, and then we will write the expectations that we want in order for our test to succeed or fail. So we're gonna start simpler than you guys might think. 
let's go ahead and open up the simulator. So this is what my app looks like. Let's say I wanna make sure that my navigation title is correct simply to start things out, right? It should be savings calculator. We wanna make sure there's no typos in there or we don't say paycheck calculator on accident or something. So we're simply gonna test that our navigation title is what we expect it to be. And I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and copy and paste that line of code in here and we can run through it together. So we're gonna say XCT assert true. This is how we make a true assertion. And then we're going to look through the app's navigation bars by saying app.navigationbars, and we're just gonna pass in the expected title. And we can say dot wait for existence with a timeout of three seconds. So if that doesn't show up after three seconds, this test will fail. So let's go ahead and run this really quickly, guys, and just see if our test pass. And then we can maybe spell this wrong and see if we get our expected failure. And we're obviously gonna get more, a lot more complex than this, but I wanted to start things off simple with an easy win and give you guys an idea of the things that you want to test all the way from the basics up to the advanced stuff that we're gonna to get to eventually. So we can see our test succeed, right? That's beautiful. If I accidentally said saving calculator and ran my test one more time, this test should fail now. So let's wait for that and see what happens. Okay, so we do get an expected failure there, um, and that's because our app's navigation title is savings calculator, and that's configured in our main view, in our main app target. So let's just change this back to savings, and that's good to go. So let's think about the next thing we wanna test now. Let's look at our inputs, for example. So when our input starts off as a raw number value of 10,000, but it then gets converted to this formatted number with a currency symbol and a comma and everything. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we test that that conversion is successful as well. So we have all of these numeric values here and we wanna make sure that we are testing that they show up correctly in our input fields. So let's go ahead and do that, guys. So we should be able to create our model here by saying let model equal savings calcs model dot default configuration. And then we could say that, for example, the first thing we wanna assert is that XCT assert true. And we want to make sure our apps dot text fields. And we're gonna say our model dot initial deposit and then we're gonna say dot formatted as currency dot exists. So basically this is going to say that we wanna make sure that we look at the initial deposit and its formatted value as a currency and just make sure that that exists. So this should be 10,000 to a formatted currency of 10,000, right? So let's just go ahead and test this really quickly to see if that works. And then we can test the remainder of our values as well in the same way we did here. So we, it looks like we have a build failure. Um, I'm really not sure why this fails. It's uh, kind of frustrating. It doesn't let me build the model from my savings calcs model, even though we have our testable import here. So I don't think we're gonna be able to use this, guys. I have to figure that out. It's some sort of linking error. Um, so instead of that, let's just go ahead and say, let initial deposit equal 10 grand. It doesn't matter if we use the default configuration or not, like it can be any number, right? And then we can do some other ones. We could say, let monthly contribution equal 200, let annual rate equal 0 0.037, and uh, let months equal 10 times 12, and let monthly rate equal annual rate divided by 12.0. So these are all the properties that we need here. And let's go ahead and add some more assertions. Um, I spelled initial deposit wrong. So next up guys, we're gonna wanna make sure the app's text fields contains this monthly contribution formatted as a currency. And then our app text fields contains our months divided by 12 because we express that in years in the simulator, right? So we pass in months to our model and we wanna make sure that this conversion works here. 
Um, and it looks like we actually need to write out this formatted as currency function. We'll do that in a second. And then we also want to make sure that our app text fields contains the annual rate times 100 and make sure that exists as well. So we're getting an error with this formatted as currency function, guys. And basically that's because we're looking at integer types for these numbers. So if we change them to doubles by adding 0 0.0 or casting them as doubles, we're unfortunately still gonna get an error. And it says formatted as currency is inaccessible due to internal protection level. So this is an extension on double in our main app target. So if we were to command click into this, you would think that you could just say public extension double, and that would resolve the issue. And you guys will notice that the errors go away. However, if we try to run our test, we're gonna get this same nasty linking error. So we'll see that our build failed. It sees we have an undefined symbol, extension in savings calculator tutorial, swift.double formatted as currency. It, it's having trouble linking uh, the stuff in our main app target to this UI testing target. And I did some research on this and this is unfortunately like just an issue with UI testing bundles. I think if we had set this up as a unit testing bundle and then just written the UI tests ourselves the same way here, that that problem wouldn't exist. So unfortunately, it's just annoying. I think this is an issue with Xcode. If you guys know a workaround for this, other than the one I just mentioned, where you set it up as a unit testing bundle and then write your UI tests in that unit testing bundle so you can successfully link things, let me know. Um, pretty annoying. So essentially what we're gonna have to do is we could simply manually type it out ourselves, guys, or like instead of saying formatted as currency, I could just look at my initial deposit here and do this. I could say, I want it to look like this, right? Initial deposit. That's one way to accomplish this. Uh, I don't think it would add commas or anything though. So that's not the best way of doing it. What I think we're gonna do here is just copy and paste the extension. Let's remove the public declaration cause it's not gonna do anything for us. So let's just go back to our uh, sorry, UI test and paste this extension in here. Uh, go up to the top and make sure you import foundation. I was playing around with some of this stuff off camera. Um, I don't think we're even gonna need this import here because we can't successfully link anything from our main target. So that should be good to go now. Let's go ahead and run this test to see if this now works. And we will, wrap this video up by finishing out this test here. And then in the next one, we will complete um, all of our UI tests for this application. This was more of an intro in writing our first test. So let's see, we're testing. Let's see if we end up succeeding. Okay, so it looks like our tests have successfully launched. So we have a successful build, that is great. And okay, it looks like we're failing. And guys, this is related to the change that we made um, with having to multiply our annual rate and stuff by 100. So if we go back to our main app target and go to the core folder, the views folder, savings calcs view, let's see what we look like here. So when we load our default values, we are just directly loading this annual interest rate from our default config, right? So this is a really cool example of why UI tests are important. So if I command click into this, I change this to 0 0.037, right? So I'm never multiplying it by 100 to display the correct value in the input field. So if I go back, what I'm gonna do is say interest rate is equal to string default config dot annual interest rate times 100 to display that in a user-friendly manner. And then we can go back to our UI tests and run this again, and we'll see that this should now behave as expected. So that's a really cool uh, catch that UI tests can help us identify and make sure that everything works as expected in our values here that when, when they show up on screen and are displayed to the user. And we see there beautifully that our tests succeed. Actually going to wrap it up for this video. There's still a lot more we need to cover in terms of our UI tests. 
So for example, the next thing we're going to cover is making sure that when we click this calculate button, we navigate over to our results screen and it displays the correct values. And we are also going to test what happens if we tap into this field. Does it successfully clear our value out, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot more we need to do in terms of our UI test coverage, guys. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. So get excited. We'll see you there. Peace.